Welcome back to Recap Kun. Today, I will be continuing my recap on The Aristocrat's Otherworldly Adventure, Serving Gods Who Go Too Far. At the end of the last episode, Kane met Tefana, the captain of the Royal Knights. They have a mock battle, where Kane manages to beat her, and she decides that she will marry him. She gets permission from the king, who explains Kane is already engaged, but this only makes her want him even more, and the king can't refuse, because Tefana is also a princess for the elf nation. The king gets suspicious that Kane could beat her, so they decided to test him with a book left by the kingdom's first king. As Kane reads it, it turns out to be in Japanese, so he is exposed, and forced to reveal the truth that he is from another world, shocking everyone with his ridiculous stats and title as God's chosen, but he asks them to just treat him the same way. Later on, Kane has another look at the first king's book, and there is a message that says if he can read the book, then he must also be from another world, so it's a record of his own experience. The king is introduced as Yuya Esford, a man who also died in an accident, but he was summoned to the world in his original body. Kane is suddenly interrupted, as Telestia and Silk wonder what he is up to. They think he must be studying for the academy entrance exams, and they ask to study with him, but he tells them he is too busy, so they ask him about the following day, but he says that is even worse for him, and he quickly runs away. However, he ends up running into Tefana, who asks him to fight with her the next day, but he apologizes to her, and runs away from her as well. The next day, it turns out to be his 12th birthday, and he is finally old enough to register as an adventurer, so he heads straight for the guild. He looks around the place, and he is impressed by the capital's guild. He runs into an adventurer, who can tell it's his first time, so he reminds him to stay safe, because he only has one life. As he walks off, Kane gets a feeling he has seen him before. He goes up to the counter, and the clerk introduces herself as Tia. Kane asks to register as an adventurer, and she tells him to fill out a form. As he fills it out, he wonders if he should mention he is a baron, but he decides to leave it out, thinking it shouldn't make a difference. After filling it out, Tia tells him to put a drop of his blood on the crystal, so he can register for his guild card. She tells him he starts off in G rank, and he thinks about his tutors, who mentioned that they were in D rank. As Tia is explaining things to him, some adventurers interrupt, telling her to stop wasting her time with a kid. The man tells Kane to go home to his mother, trying to kick him, but Kane easily dodges. His friend tries to attack as well, but Kane avoids him as well. He makes a fool of them, and the man prepares to draw his sword. But things are stopped, as the red-haired adventurer from earlier appears, and the man recognizes him as Claude, from the Ice Flame Party. Claude asks if he wants to fight, and the men run off instead. Kane thanks Claude for his help, and Claude can tell he is strong, seeing the way he avoided the attacks from the men. They have a drink together, and Kane gets juice since he is still a kid. Claude is interested in how he is so strong at such an age, and Kane tells him he was tutored when he was younger. Kane asks him why the men mentioned Ice Flame, and Claude reveals it's the name of his party, where he fights with a flaming sword, and his wife uses ice magic. He recommends Kane find a party, so that he can take on bigger quests and rank up faster, revealing his gold card, which means he is an A-ranked adventurer. Kane is impressed seeing the card, but Claude says there is room to improve, mentioning that the first king was triple S ranked, and his card was supposedly black. Claude suddenly gets hit, as his wife Lena suddenly appears. She wonders why he is drinking, and Kane introduces himself, saying that Claude saved him. She finds him cute, even offering to help him if he gets into any more trouble, but she drags Claude away, saying they need to get on with their quest. Kane checks out the quest board, and sees one for transporting cargo. He thinks it would be easy with his item box, but he decides he wants a quest that involves defeating monsters. He finds a quest to defeat goblins, and there is no limit to how many he can defeat, so he thinks it's the perfect first quest for him. But he suddenly runs into Tefana, and Desart explains they are headed out to do some training with the knights. Tefana wonders what he is up to, and Kane says he is about to go on his first quest as an adventurer. Tefana decides to go with him, saying she can't miss her husband's first adventure, and she leaves the training exercise up to Gazard. Kane tries to run, but Tefana grabs him and drags him off. They head into the forest, and Tefana enjoys her time with him, dragging him along and wondering where the goblins are at. 
Kane uses his search skill, detecting the goblins up ahead, and they see a man surrounded by goblins. They quickly rush to the man, and Kane heals him with his magic. Tifana rushes at the goblins, easily cutting them down, but there are more goblins that appear. Kane uses his magic to boost her strength, and she feels as though they are fighting as one. She easily cuts them all down, but there is a giant goblin that appears. But thanks to Kane's magic, it's no match for her, and she cuts it in half. She starts dreaming about their wedding, asking Kane to praise her, but there are suddenly green lizards that appear. Kane tells her to get away with the man, telling her to leave them to him. He uses his light spell to blind them, and then follows up with his ice pillar. Gigantic ice pillars emerge, and the man wonders what's going on, but Tafana knows it's just Kane being Kane. Sometime later, we see Kane's tutors as they investigate the green lizards, but there is only a huge crater left behind. Kane reports to the guild, and he wonders if he can hand in the green lizards, even though he didn't take the quest. Tia is shocked to hear this, because a green lizard quest is usually C-ranked, and Kane reveals that he defeated 30 of them. Tia can't believe it, and she rushes to the chief, and tells him what happened. The chief meets with Kane, introducing himself as Cedric, mentioning that the guild master is busy, so he is handling his case. He thinks Kane is trying to cheat the system, because he only just registered as an adventurer, and he thinks it would be impossible for him to kill a green lizard. Kane insists that he beat them, but Cedric thinks he is just a peasant trying to cheat the guild out of the reward money. He decides to punish Kane by revoking his guild card, saying that he doesn't tolerate cheaters, but the guild master suddenly enters. Cedric explains the situation, saying there is no way Kane could have defeated 30 green lizards. But the guild master laughs, telling Cedric there is much for him to learn. Cedric can't believe he is siding with Kane, but the guild master calls in his guest, which turns out to be Tafana. She hugs onto Kane, calling him her husband, while Tia and Cedric are shocked to hear this. Kane wonders what she is doing at the guild, and she explains she was there to discuss the city's countermeasures against goblins and green lizards. The guild master mentions that Kane is a baron and the hero who saved the princess, but Cedric can't believe it, saying there was no mention of it on his registry form. But Kane says he left it out because he didn't want any special treatment. The guild master mentions that if Kane marries Tafana, then he will also be his brother-in-law, which is a shock to Kane, learning that he is Tafana's brother. Cedric begs for forgiveness, and Tafana mentions he should be executed for insulting a noble, but Kane accepts his apology, warning him not to assume things so quickly. Kane asks if they will take his green lizards, and the guild master decides to promote him to see rank, but Tafana says it's not enough, mentioning how he is stronger than her, and even defeated a red dragon when he was 10, so the guild master decides to make him A rank instead, although he mentions that Kane will need to subjugate some bandits. Tia and Cedric can't believe he is being promoted to A rank in a single day, and the guild master tells them to handle the paperwork. After they leave, the guild master apologizes for Cedric's behavior, but Kane tells him not to worry. The guild master admits he was worried when he heard his sister got engaged, but he is relieved after meeting him, and he tells him to take care of his sister. Meanwhile, we see the gods watching him, laughing at all the trouble he's causing. They wonder if it was a mistake to make him so strong, but Xenum says he needs to get even stronger, revealing that a being named Aaron is about to be released from his seal. He was sealed away 300 years ago, and the gods fear what will happen when he gets free. So they think Cain needs to get even stronger, thinking he needs to train with a certain master to reach the next level. Back at the palace, the girls ask to study with him again, but Tafana suddenly enters, saying she enjoyed their date in the forest, and that they should go to the beach next time. So the girls realize that he turned them down the other day, only to end up on a date with Tafana instead. They tell him he needs to take them on dates as well, and all he can do is apologize to them, but that's where this video ends. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.